What is going on guys, DBG here, and in this video we are going to be talking about the new buzzer beater packs in NBA 2K20, my team. And honestly, I'm, like at this stage, it's just a case of, not gonna lie, it's just like, oh, it is what it is, it is what it is, like, as much as I much, much would rather 2K have done what they did last year, go for more of an approach of better timing and releasing opals around May, June, which kind of uh, improves the longevity of the game. I personally believe that the game is so based around four badges that I the overalls and stats of players don't really matter that much. It's literally, it's four badges. The game is based around, well, f probably there's four badges and there's another four like that are almost the same. Well, that are kind of important secondary badges, but like the game is based around, if you've got Hall of Fame Quick Draw, Hall of Fame Ranging Center, Hall of Fame Clamps, and Hall of Fame Quick First Step, you could have 80 in every stat and you'll be you'll play like a 99 overall. Like it's as simple as that. But there's no point in me continuing to complain um about 2K giving Galaxy Opals. And I know I said that I was going to do this video last weekend. I just never got to it. And honestly, the reason why I didn't get to it was because I thought maybe it was gonna be like a quick fix. Maybe they were going to release a couple of opals and then kind of calm it down with the opals a little bit, but Honestly, it just doesn't look like that's going to be the case. It looks like we're going to get more and more. And we have something, co we more than likely have a promo coming on Friday. And Buzzer Beater, I'm guessing, is the new Flash Pack type thing. And as you guys can see, we're getting more and more Galaxy Opals with Galaxy Opal Steph Curry. Obviously, if you guys are new to the channel, subscribe. We're trying to hit 150,000 subscribers by the 1st of May. When a video like this, um, obviously, it's not going to be the most positive video. But at the same time, we're still going to be looking at stats. I will make a video tomorrow or, yeah, it will be tomorrow. It'll be tomorrow without question on why 2K are releasing the Opals. And it's probably something that, like, I, I don't think 2K particularly wants people to make this type, this specific video, but it's going to have to be made because there's enough people that are confused about why Galaxy Opals are coming out. So one thing that's really confused me, can someone explain to me why so many small forwards have been given the power forward primary position? Like why they gave it to Kawhi Leonard, why they gave it to Larry Bird? Like, whatever at them, there's absolutely no reason to give Paul Pierce power for a primary position. Does, like, does that make a difference with how coaches interact or something? I'm, like, I'm just kind of confused why they have the wrong primary position on so many. But you know what, like, again, the only way I can describe just how mind-boggling some of the stuff with 2K is, is that, look... It is what it is. We've kind of given up on this being a really great game. We've given up on this being NBA 2K19. And honestly, um, I'm just I'm just confused at a lot of things. So Paul Pierce has got a really good mid-range shot, really good three. A great speed, speed of ball and acceleration. He has got 86 ball handle. Got really solid perimeter defense, lateral quickness. 84 steals, pretty good. Got a really good post fadeaway. Good driving dunk of 85. And like, you know what? This is the prime example of that. Like, this card's probably going to be about 5k MT. Not going to lie, this card's going to be 5k MT at a push. Maybe cheaper. And I'm saying this right now. This is going to be a legit card. Like, look at these badges. He has got all four of the badges that I said. Steady shoot is a problem. I'm telling you, steady shooter is a problem. But it's not enough of a problem that this card is not going to be incredible. Because you know what? We're going to get a pink diamond Paul Pierce without Steady Shooter. We're going to get an Opal Paul Pierce without Steady Shooter. But this card's basically Galaxy Opal Mellow, or pink diamond Mellow, but instead of 150k, he's going to be 4 or 5k MT. And that is like, that's a push. Like, that is an actual push that he could be going for that. Again, I could be completely wrong, completely off point, and he could be a lot more than that. But you're looking at a guy that is going to be at most 15k MT. It was the very, very most he's going to cost. But it's more than likely going to be a lot less than that. With Hall of Fame clamps, Hall of Fame quick first step, Hall of Fame quick draw, Hall of Fame range extender, Hall of Fame dead eye, deep fades, green machine, hot zone under, clutch shooter, catch and shoot, tired of shooter, difficult shots. Got gold corner specials as well. Got things like gold intimidator. He's got gold, sorry, Hall of Fame pick dodger, Hall of Fame defensive leader, Hall of Fame, sorry, gold dimer, gold downhill. So he's just elite. This is an absolutely elite card in NBA 2K20, my team. And the fact, like, again, got things like Pogo and post move locked in means he's going to be an all right post defender if he happens to be switched. So, lads, I'm telling you, this card's going to be fantastic. 
Now we have got Drazen Petrovic. We know what we're getting when it comes to Drazen. So Drazen Petrovic is always going to be an elite shooter. But this is probably the first Drazen Petrovic that I would call an elite defender, to be completely honest. So he's got a driving layup of um, 95, which is really good. Driving dunk, 75, which is not terrible. I think 99 three ball, 97 mid. Decent speed to ball and acceleration. He's got an 86 ball handle, which again, like 86 obviously isn't the highest stat in the world, but you, can't re- you don't really need that much better than that, to be completely honest. 91 lateral quickness is really good, actually, to be honest. Um, 65 steals, a little bit poor. Got an all right height, not too tall, not too, well, not particularly tall, but again, not too small to fight the two. He's like, uh, he's got Hall, oh, lads, they give Draz and Petrovic Hall of Fame clamps. Like, yeah, I know, I fully, fully know that he needs Hall of Fame clamps to be, well, he needs at least gold clamps to be usable, but like, and this is going to be the last Draz and Petrovic we get, but you'd be thinking, like, surely just give him gold clamps or something, and the card's still pretty good, but you're looking at this card, no steady. He's got a Hall of Fame range extender, Hall of Fame quick draw. He has got Hall of Fame volume shooter. He's got gold quick first step, which is pretty good. Got Hall of Fame clamps. He's got interceptor, intimidator, pickpocket, pick dodger. And just basically every shooting badge Hall of Fame, except for a deep phase, which doesn't matter. Pump fake maestro, which literally does not matter in my team. And steady shooter, which is good not to have. He's got a, pr- a couple of pretty good defensive badges as well, like Hall of Fame clamps. Some good badges going to the basket. Like, again, we are looking at an absolutely elite card. Like, if I was to make a comparison with this card, it would be, like, a worse dunking Opal at Ray Allen. And, like, anyone... And, I like, I fell for it initially. To be fair, I'm a content creator. I kind of had to. But, like, I, as I always say, never lock in for anyone, lads. Because anyone who locked in for that Ray Allen is... Man, they're a couple of million empty down. Like... Had you kept that couple of million MT, suddenly you got Buddy Heald and Drazen. Two comparable cards. Do I think Ray Allen's better than Buddy and Drazen? Maybe. Maybe. I think Buddy's better, but you can definitely make an argument Ray Allen's better. And unless Drazen's the best release in the game, I don't think anyone's arguing Drazen's better. But he's not enough off. And he's probably going to be around... My prediction, he's going to be around 20 to 30k MT max. And for that price, like even if he is 50k MT... He's still going to be a steal. Like, he's still going to be an absolute steal. And I just... Man, these are... I can guarantee you these cards are all fantastic. These are all going to be absolutely fantastic in this game. To be fair, Curry's probably going to be the worst of them all. Because Curry's release this year, in my opinion, is horrendous. I hate Curry's release this year. Even though Curry's release historically has been great. But these two cards are already great. And you know for a fact... One of... I, Maybe Paul Pierce might be a little more expensive and then Drazen's cheaper or Drazen's a bit more expensive and Pierce is cheaper. But one of these two is going to be less than 15k MT. Maybe both. Maybe both. There's potential, like, I think the lowest price Pierce gets to is about 4k MT. I think, realistically, Pierce is probably going to be about 7 or 8k MT. Petrovic is going to go 13, 14k MT. But there's a chance that you could see Petrovic even dropping below 10k MT. Now we are on to Chris Webber. So... I am telling you guys this right now. I don't even need to look at badges. Like, you already know how good Chris Webber's best cards already are. And this is, like, almost an endgame Chris Webber from any other year. His lowest stat is 81. 81, speed with ball, is his lowest stat. He can do everything. He can do absolutely everything. And just like Paul Pierce, he has a really weird primary position of power forward. I don't understand why... um, So, he's primary position of center instead of power forward. I don't understand why it's not power forward, but... I'm thinking about maybe 70k for this card, and he's probably the best power forward in my team. Like 92 post fade, 92 post hook, 90 driving dunk. He's got really solid speed to ball acceleration. Look at that defense, 82 lower queens is pretty good. Also got a 90 block, 82 perimeter defense. Good steal, great rebound, and great mid range, great three. I'm guessing he's got clamps and range extender, at least gold. He has got, thank you, 2k gods. Thank you. Thank you for not giving us range extender Chris Webber this early. Don't get me wrong. This card is a 10 times better Paul Millsap. Like, this is a 10 times better Paul Millsap, this card right here. He's basically Paul Millsap with Hall of Fame Quick First Step and Hall of Fame Dimer. This is one of the best power forwards in the game. This is one of the most overpowered small ball centers. This is a 
significantly better Carl Malone or significantly better Paul Millsap. This is unbelievable, but this card is not broken good, which is what you want. You want a card that's really, really good, which this card is, but not broken, which this card would have been with Range Extender. So he's got a Hall of Fame Quick for a Step, Hall of Fame Dimer, got a Hall of Fame Rebound Chaser, Hall of Fame Worm, Moving Truck, Hall of Fame Pogo Stick, Gold Clamps. He's got Gold Rim Protector, Post Move Lockdown. He's got Dead Eye, Hot Start, Hot Sound Hunter, Quick Draw. Um, catch and Shoot is really good. Um, Hall of Fame, Corner Specialist, Difficult Shots Hall of Fame, and a couple of Inside Badges Hall of Fame. So, honestly, this card is right up there with the best centers in the game. I think for my play style, you might even argue he's... It's basically, for him and Bam and a bio, I know his stats are better than Bam, but you're giving up Range Extender, um, and you're getting Hall of Fame Quick First Step. And I think that's the difference between um, Anthony Davis, Bam Adebayo, and this card right here. I think, basically, um, Anthony Davis has got the defense, he's got the limitless, Bam Adebayo's got the defense, got the limitless, and also got an 86 ball handle. Um, Chris Webber has got the ball handle, um, doesn't have the limitless, but has quick first step. So he's definitely going to be in the conversation for the best like small ball center in the game. But thankfully, no range extender, which means the card's not going to be broken good. He's going to be good, but not broken. Then we have got Steph Curry. And I'm telling you this right now. I couldn't. It doesn't matter what Steph Curry stats are. He's going to be the worst of all these players, except for maybe Drazen. Um, 98 mid, 99-3. It's a given. 75 driving hook is not awful. Let's see what the tendency is. Um, okay, there's an error there. Uh, let's try one last time. Nope. So obviously, you cannot check tendencies. I'm guessing tendencies going to be somewhere around 75-80. I can't see... Steph Curry dunking too much in his game, to be honest. Uh, 96 speed, 2 ball acceleration, 60 interior defense, got 97 lateral quickness, 98 steal. Really solid rebounding stats. You know what? I can see us getting another um, Opal Steph Curry. Honestly, I can. I think this is not going to be the only Opal Steph Curry we see. And because, yeah, I know he's got 39 Hall of Fame badges, but he only has 39. There's now like 80 of them, so... I can see him having more Hall of Fame ads than this. I don't know how he can have much more, but I can see him having more in future card. He's a Hall of Fame clamps, pick uh, pocket, interceptor. Does he have pick dodger? Yeah, he's got a gold. He's got gold quick, or Hall of Fame quick first step, Hall of Fame dimer, Hall of Fame floor general, Hall of Fame handles for days, space creator, stop and go, tight handles, downhill Hall of Fame. He's at every shooting badge Hall of Fame, except the three that don't matter whatsoever. Um, quick draw, range extender, I'm not a fan of Steph Curry even with range extender because I used his other card and it was not great. But um, yeah, Steph Curry's going to be really good. Um, you have his release down. He's going to be one of the better point guards in the game. But let's be let's be 100 here. I would still probably take a Jeremy Lin over this Steph Curry. I would still take... Oh, there's, there is better point guards. There's better point guards. But don't get me wrong, a great card. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You've got four absolutely fantastic cards, and the fact that the thumbnail is going to say one of them is not worth picking up is kind of crazy, but for all these ones, I'd say the Opal Steph Curry is probably going to be the worst value. I think just in pure ability-wise, I think I think Paul Pierce, I know he's got steady, but he's basically Carmelo Anthony, um, and he also can't shoot from the corner. Drazen Petrovic is going to be a great, great 3 and D guy. But I don't think we're going to be seeing any of... I think we're going to see Chris Webber in almost every God Squad. I think he becomes the most relevant center in the game. But I don't think we see any of the others in God Squads. But anyway, that is the video. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.